In this video, we're going to talk about the Chaikin Money Flow Indicator. Stay tuned. Hey traders, a very warm welcome to you. So, have you heard of the Chaikin Money Flow Indicator? Maybe you haven't, maybe you have. Not one of the more popular ones out there, but you know what? It's quite an interesting indicator. Digging into it and seeing what it's all about, it makes a lot of sense. Let me talk about it and then let's talk about some ideas and strategies potentially we can use it. So Chaikin, it's spelt exactly as we've got on here, C-H-A-I-K-I-N, money flow, and that's what we're talking about now. So I've got it on my chart here, settings, this is an Apple chart by the way, um, we'll talk in a minute why it works a little bit better on stocks, but it does work on other stuff as well, but there's some limitations. Discuss those in a second. Daily chart, Apple chart, and we've got the settings on here. Ah, 20, which was the default settings I had when I loaded it up on the chart. Right, okay. So Chaikin basically said, do you know what? Um, the closing position of the day is indicative to the strength of the trend. So in other words, he developed a formula that basically gave more weighting to a market that if you imagine this is the day, we've got one day here of price, he gave more weighting to a market that did that as a market that did this. Even ultimately they close at the same price, if you get the idea what I'm trying to, trying to draw there. This close is right at the highs compared to the low, good range. Um, you know, there's 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 no pullback. It's closing the upper tier. That gets more weighting in Chaikin's eyes than this. So bearing that in mind, let's have a look at what's going on. So how it's calculated? Well, the money flow is calculated uh, between a level of plus one and zero. Now, as I have said, as we kind of push up in a traditional uptrend, so you're getting solid green candles, you are going to get an increasing Chaikin money flow line it's going to push up and up and up and up you know and as you've got green candles solid green solid green solid green solid green you're going to get more of a push and more of a push and you know what i like that oops didn't mean to do that let me go back to the cross here you know i really like that in terms of um you know logic because if you think about a day's trend you know if you've got a good strong day it starts at lows closes on highs the next day you know lows and highs that's a sign of a really strong market if you trade in a bear market you have that the other way around bull market that's what happens if you kind of get this indecision these dojis and in, in fact you know what if we look at this apple chart here when we really kicked into gear so it's kind of kicked into gear as we cross this zero line and that's that's one way of, of actually utilizing it you you get in when you cross the zero line and that's the theory anyway you, as the cross comes it could be the start of a trend uh, some limitations to that of course as with all tools but that's the kind of point where you know things may well be changing so as we start to chug along we chug along chug along but look interestingly here this is where i think is quite an interesting uh, uh, perspective from this indicator is that we're in an uptrend we start to get a little bit choppy in this range here don't we start to chop around you know some of the candles are a little bit grubby and even though we're kind of at highs from this push up here we're still at highs the chaikin indicator rolls back down because look at these candles you've got dojis you've got tails you've got wicks you've got indecision so the strength of the trend isn't as strong so that's being represented in the fact that the chaikin indicator line is going back down to zero now the theory is and i've just some observations when i've looked at some of the charts is that um you know buying early on on the cross is okay it's fine it's like any cross you know moving average cross any kind of trending indicator cross there's a bit of risk involved in it because you could get caught in chop but what you can do is if you kind of say listen i know we're in an uptrend now i want to buy when we cross back below the zero and cross back up so in other words have a filter so listen uptrend yes chaikin is going to be strong now wait for the pullback in price or the consolidation in price to have the chaikin going lower and then i'm going to buy again as we cross up through that zero line so that's going to be around give or take there approximately just in that example just an idea that i think is a slightly more powerful way of using it now of course if you want to get on a trend and you think okay i want to be on a trend regardless then you need to be prepared to be whipped out a little bit by buying the first cross because it's going to whip and down below whip between you know above zero below zero and actually if we look at a downtrend let's look at snapchat you know that's been a, 
a downtrend and again this could be anything but you see how you know when we get those solid red candles chikin pushes lower 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 into kind of an extreme and actually observation i've seen that minus 0.5 and plus 0.5 tends to be a bit of an extreme and it makes a lot of sense as well doesn't it when you've had several really strong days strong green it's stretched same with the downside and when you see that chike in extreme it's probably due not necessarily a pullback but a, a rest a bit of a calming a bit of relaxing and you get that kind of thing as you see with, with the snapchat example you know minus 0.5 it relaxes a little bit yes it does go lower but it's not as strong the trend is not as strong it's not as aggressive it's not as you know clear cut now the only downside with chikin is that he um or the indicator should i say and, and this comes back obviously from his analysis is that he only takes into account the day's trade so the the, the calculation without going into depth is like high and low and you can google it if you want to see the exact formula but it doesn't take into account a previous gap so if you've gapped up and see you've closed here and you've gapped up to here it doesn't take that into account all it takes into account is this high low and close of the day and what you can do is you know that that's giving you like a raw formula and then what you set it to is your length and that's just smoothing out that number throughout the period like a moving average would do it's smoothing over the period so 20 days 10 days you know 50 days whatever you want obviously the longer higher number you're going to get the, the the fewer signals the less noise um but it's going to be a little bit later before you get that signal same with those moving averages isn't it you know the short moving averages are firing off all the time moving quite aggressively more signals but a lot more noise anyway that's chiking guys uh, reasonably interesting while it's here let's put up something you might be familiar with like a, a FTSE chart or something now bearing in mind the reason i haven't put this up on an example is that because it's taking that high low and closing because i'm using a kind of cfd adjusted chart here it might not be exactly good for example purposes but it gives you an idea, doesn't it? And, and also you can see, look, when we get these extreme moves, okay, we didn't get quite the plus 0.5 as we did with some of the stocks, but you can see these extreme type spikes kind of stop things a little bit, don't they? You know, this sort of extreme here, it, it just calms things down. It makes sense because it's that rubber band is stretched. It doesn't necessarily mean it's the end of the trend by, by, by any means, but it just means that things have... Kind of got a little bit carried away with themselves. Uh, let me relax it. So one more thing before I go. So potentially we could say, okay, I want to get involved. I'm in for some other signal. And I'm going to hold it until Chikin kind of goes to a new high or goes, you know, above the previous high. Then I'm going to look to close the position. So that's one way of, of using it rather than a traditional cross. Anyway, good little tool that, guys. Let me know your thoughts on that in the comments below. And if you use it, if you're a big fan of it, I'd be interested to know how you used it. If it's something different to the way that I've covered in this video. Hope you enjoyed it, guys. Take care. See you in the next one. Good trading. Bye-bye.